All right. So here in my studio slash gym slash jujitsu slash place where we do all the things we enjoy. And the goal today is to find out if we could take professional photos with the M50. I'm in a couple forum groups. I have the M50 and I've had a, quite a few people actually ask me that question. Do I need to buy a new camera? Can I get good quality photos with the M50? Today, we're gonna find out. So let me flip this around here real quick. All right, so here we got my wonderful model and wife, Liz. <laughs> We've got some white foam boards for some bounce. We've got the Savage Universal Beige Backdrop, um, Westcott FJ400, um, Westcott Remote, and the M50 with the Sigma 18 to 35, and that is tethered, and we're uh, doing wireless shooting through uh, LRC. So uh, let's take some photos and see what we got. So the M50 holds a special place with me. It's the first professional camera I got. And what I mean by professional, it wasn't my cell phone, it wasn't a Polaroid, and it wasn't a disposable camera. So I got the M50 because I wanted to vlog. Um, as a vlogging camera, it's great. I got the M50 with the kit lens, I think it's like a 16 to 30 M50 kit lens. Here's some details. Ah, 15 to 45. As I was saying, I got the M50 with the kit lens, the 15 to 45, has a flip out screen. Um, it could do 4K. We'll talk more about that in a minute. You could attach your microphone to the top. It had a lot of options. It seemed like a great value. And the price point was one in which I wouldn't have to go out and sell myself in order to buy it. I'll never do that again. So I got the M50 and away I went. I learned a couple of things pretty quick. When it came to vlogging, like I said, it worked great. You could throw it on a gorilla pod, you could hold it out here. Um, the 15 millimeter was actually designed for the crop sensor, so I believe you get a true 15 millimeters with that. You can uh, get a really wide field of view on it. It was a cool, uh, cool little camera, but I quickly realized a couple of things. The kit lens wasn't very sharp. I wanted to take sharper photos. So I went out and I got the 32 millimeter F1.4 lens. Getting that lens is when I realized that the camera actually could produce tack sharp, really, really good quality images. So then I went from wanting to make YouTube videos to wanting to make YouTube videos and take photos. So I used the kit lens, I used the 32 millimeter 1.4 to learn everything I could about the camera. I learned about aperture, I learned about shutter speed, I learned about ISO, I learned how to properly expose a photo. And that's what I really think the M50 helped me out with a ton. Now I'm not saying that the M50 needs to be resigned to a beginning or a starter camera, because it certainly doesn't. But at the price point, what you get per dollar, it works really, really well in that regard. So I started to evolve when it comes to photography. I started to evolve when it comes to taking photos and people wanted to start paying me to do these things. So I always thought, why not? You know, I haven't yet run into any limitations with the M50 when it comes to picture quality, especially with that 32 millimeter 1.4. So my wife and I own a business here in town and we have it in a warehouse is where we operate this business and I have some extra space in there. So I started to build a little studio. So I got backdrops, I got studio strobes. Um, I subscribed to Adobe so I can use all their software and Lightroom and I do video editing in Premiere Pro. So I had this little studio going and my camera was my EOS M50. I wouldn't use the kit lens, but I would use that 32 millimeter 1.4. Something important to remember is using a crop sensor with that Canon M50. So the 32 millimeter winds up being closer to a 50 millimeter, it might even be a little bit over a 50 millimeter. Let's see. What's 32 millimeter times 1.5? 1 .5? 32 times 1.5 is 40. Winds up being a 48 millimeter lens. Now around that 50 millimeter range is okay when it comes to portraits, studio portraits. Um, I really don't like to go lower than that. I really don't like to go lower than 50, but I was making it work with the 32 being a 48 due to the crop sensor. Here's some of the photos I took with that lens and that whole setup there. And again, here I was just learning. Studio shooting was a whole different thing for me. So 
So after doing that for a while, I had purchased a Canon EOS to EF adapter. Now I was able to use all the EF lenses that Canon makes. Opens up a whole new ballpark for you. So the first lens I went out and got was a Sigma 18 to 35. It's 35 times 1.5. That puts us at 52 and a half millimeters. That's a little sweet spot for me. Now I would argue the 32 millimeter 1.4 is sharper than the Sigma 18 to 35. I like the 18 to 35 because I like the ability to tap my zoom in or out. You know, I wasn't doing huge swings when it comes to zoom, but it's better than having to pick up your tripod and move it forward or backwards. So the flexibility to zoom in or zoom out just a little bit, like I said, I like to stay around that 50 millimeter range, made it to where it was easier to shoot with the Sigma 18 to 35, and it would still produce tack sharp images. Here's some of the images with the Sigma. Now let's talk about the actual camera body itself. I can tether and live shoot with Lightroom, no problem whatsoever. You can touch the screen for autofocus. That's awesome. It has quick, responsive, great autofocus if the lighting is right. I notice here, just looking at my monitor, that I'm in and out of focus a little bit. Don't really know why that is, but I'm sure I'll see in post what happened. So you've been sitting here listening to me go on and on and on about how great the M50 is. And you're probably asking yourself, well, if the camera is so great, why would anyone ever need another camera? There are a couple limitations. I actually just got my first full frame camera. Now in the process of looking for a camera, I quickly found out that 39 year old Bobby cannot command the dollar on the street that I did when I was 25 years old. So I had to settle for a used camera and I bought a used EOS 6D. Um, I still think this is a phenomenal camera, but it's a full frame camera. It's the first full frame camera I've owned. And when comparing certain types of shooting to the crop sensor that the M50 has, I found that the image is less noisy and it has better dynamic range. I can push and pull the photos more with the 6D than I could the M50. Now there's a couple reasons why the picture might be less noisy. It's about a four megapixel different, um, but more megapixels means more options for noise. I'm sure you could find a gazillion videos talking about why that is. I don't wanna get too deep down that rabbit hole here today. Um, but the bigger sensor also means that allows more light and more information to hit it. I'm not a super camera nerd. I don't get too geeky on this stuff. I'll refer you to some other uh, YouTube videos um, where they probably go into some detail about these things. But I have found that the 6D does work better in certain scenarios. Uh, like I said, low light, you get a little bit better dynamic range with it. I'm able to punch in on my photos more and the 6D seems to um, retain more detail than the M50 did. Now, that being said, in a studio setting, I don't see that big of a difference. Um, it might be that in a studio setting, I have so much control that I can account for those variables to where the camera doesn't have to, meaning I'm using strobes. I can make sure my exposure and my lighting is perfect so I don't need a massive dynamic range. Also, obviously in a studio, I'm not dealing with low light situations. So if I was running out the door and I was gonna go shoot like a car show here in town, or I was gonna go shoot some landscapes, or I just could grab one camera, I'm probably grabbing my full frame camera. If I was going to shoot in a studio, I would grab either one and be perfectly content with my choice. So let's talk about video. I still use the EOS M50 as my primary video camera. I generally uh, record in 1080p at 24 frames per second. I find that it's beautiful quality and it's an easy workflow. Uh, Premiere Pro handles it and pops through it like it's nothing. Now about that crop, it's there. And in close quarters, you're definitely gonna struggle using 4K because of that crop. Um, just for this video right here, I decided to give 4K a shot, but I'm a good seven or eight feet from the camera right now. So if I were any closer, I'd have to bump down to 1080p so I lose the crop. And you know you can shoot easier in close quarters with that setting. That being said, I think the 1080 video from the M50 is phenomenal. Um, I've shot professional work in 1080p with the M50. 99.9% .9 of clients aren't gonna ask for 4K footage and they're not gonna notice if it's 1080p or if it's 4K, as long as you know what you're doing being the person who's recording. So to bring it all home here, can the M50 produce professional quality photos? In my opinion, absolutely. Can the M50 produce professional quality video? In my opinion, absolutely. If you're thinking about buying one, do yourself a favor and buy one. 
get yourself a 32 millimeter 1.4 as soon as you start running up against the limitations of the kit lens. In my opinion, that's the perfect second lens to go with the N50. If you guys like content like this, please like and subscribe. Find us all over social media. Just throw a front slash the Bob and Liz show at the end of the URL, either on Facebook or Instagram. Our uh, website is bobandlizshow.com. There's no the on that.